So uh, we have with us this evening Betsy Baxter, a first alum, longtime mentor with several awards uh, under her belt as well, not only as a, as a um, mentor, but a student, and also tons of outreach experience. Um, and then Frank Hobart from uh, Las Pumas uh, up in New Carlisle, Indiana, uh, longtime mentor, teacher, sponsor, uh, Entrepreneurship Award, Engineering Inspiration Award for you guys. I know at least one um, that you guys have got. Did you guys also get a district one at one point? Yeah, uh, we've not won at the state level. We've won at the district twice. Okay. And, uh, we've won entrepreneurship five times in three years. Okay, that's right. Um, and uh, and how long have you been mentoring, Frank? Well, one nine sevens existed for thirteen seasons and thirteen seasons. Oh, okay. All right. Fantastic. One. Yep. Okay. So we thought we the. Big thing for our, uh, just so you, uh, Betsy and, and Frank, so you guys know, we've been doing these calls this year. Um, the idea is that our, our rookie first year, second year, and third year teams, uh, we invite to these calls on a variety of topics. And then, um, and then teams that are heading out into, um, they're wrapping up their third year, um, if they want to stay on the calls further on, they certainly can. We also have invited um, any of our reactivated teams, uh, especially because some of our reactivated teams have new mentors. So sometimes we assume a reactivated team, oh, well, they're back, so they, they know what's going on. Well, not necessarily. Uh, and then we also have a couple of other veteran teams that have had some big uh, mentor turnover and have uh, some relatively new to first mentor. So we've we've uh, also invited them. And, and then we put these videos out onto our website uh, for them to see. So with that, um, really, and I usually start with some announcements and stuff, and really there isn't a whole lot to announce. State championship is over. We have 11 teams from FRC um, and I believe six FTC teams and uh, two FLL teams heading to Detroit next week. Uh, so it should be a lot of fun in Detroit. Um, and, uh, and hopefully Indiana teams, just like last year, will, uh, will be very competitive. Uh, all that will be live streamed on the first Twitch channel. So those of you who are interested in watching, you can certainly go to uh, First Inspire's website and check it out. The other big announcement, I guess, that I would pass on to all of you is, is definitely look on social media. Uh, because um, first announced on Saturday that they are this year's recipient of the Force for Change uh, charity. So Star Wars, Lucasfilm, and Disney have partnered with First this year uh, to help make First louder and, and uh, have already donated $1.5 million to First. Uh, and so there's also a sweepstakes involved in that. You can retweet videos and, uh, and get a chance to win a trip to the new Star Wars experience. So that's, that's very exciting. So moving on. All right. So what you should be doing timeline, I just kind of put this on here. Um, Betsy, um, why don't you, if you wouldn't mind, why don't you start uh, and talk a little bit about, you and I had chatted about some of the things we'd have you cover. Mm -hmm. So if you wouldn't mind kind of, covering those, um, and we'll just kind of take the conversation from there. Yeah, okay, so um, I was gonna start out with uh, team recruiting. So um, generally, it's a good, good, good plan to start your recruiting for your next year's team in the spring. So what we've done in the past is we will go to um, the local middle schools, especially the ones that have FLL and VEX programs. And we'll actually invite those students into our shop in the spring. So generally early to mid-May. So they can kind of, we'll have, kind of have an open house type thing. Students can see sort of what a meeting looks like. We'll put the robots out on display. Um, and so then that kind of gets the kids excited about what they can do in the next year. 
And that also gives them the opportunity to travel with us in the summer. So a lot of times teams attend off-season events. I know a bunch of teams go over to Rockford and attend the Rock River off-season. We've had teams go to Cory. Uh, there's events like IRI. And those are great, great times to get incoming freshmen familiar with what you do as, as a team, especially because fall for new freshmen can be kind of boring if they don't know what's going on. So the sooner you can get them involved, the better. Uh, and if you don't have good connections with those middle school, like maybe you don't have FLL teams in your middle schools or you don't have uh, VEX teams, uh, you can also contact um, tech ed teachers in those buildings. If your tech ed teachers in your building have a good relationship with them, that's still a good resource to bring those students in. Okay. And then... So that, that kind of gives us those connections with those incoming freshmen. Uh, a lot of times, if you're like not prepared as a team to do those types of things in the spring, I know there's a lot of stuff going on. We also make sure that we connect with, um, uh, most high schools have like a freshman orientation night. And so a lot of times other clubs will set up booths and talk about what they do as an organization organization at a high school level and so we make sure that we have a booth for those students as well and again it's just you know a robot demo so they can kind of see uh, what the team does what we build and we're very upfront with like we put a lot of literature out because we want incoming freshmen to know what the time commitment of the season looks like and plus we want them to know that we're looking for more than just people who know how to build robots so we make sure that there are signs that tell the students that, you know, no experience needed. Um, we make sure there's signs and stuff out so we know, you know, we're looking for journalists, we're looking for graphic designers, we're looking for public speakers, we're looking for, you know, all of the technical fields, CAD, even animation. So that that way, if there are any kids that are even remotely interested, they can identify an area where they might fit. That's great. Dad, do you guys also do anything um, in terms of, of your current high school students? So maybe kids who didn't join the team, but are current sophomores, juniors, you know, up, up rising uh, upperclassmen that you might try to lure onto the team? Or So we are very lucky in that at Harrison, the administration in the building is very involved in the high school team. So all throughout the spring, the student body here is a lot about us anyway. They get up-to-date notifications on how we've done at events, uh, if we're going to state, when we go, or if we're going to world. They hear all of that a lot. And so that definitely helps with recruiting because, you know, they're getting updates on our team about once every two weeks throughout all of spring. They know and who so, you are, in other words. Yeah. And so that, that helps a lot. And so then we make sure that, like, the students who are on the team are very welcoming to any other interest in the building. And so that helps. Okay. Cool. So uh, definitely some great advice on, uh, on the recruiting in the spring and then in the fall with your kind of freshman welcome event. I know some schools do freshman fro-yo nights or back to school mm -hmm. like parent freshman orientation kinds of activities so yeah so those are, are a good way to sandwich the summer and get those uh, students in um the um so frank uh from you real quick um in terms of off season uh now that you know once the season's over regardless of whether you're going to world or not let's say world is over how often does uh las pumas meet then in the off season starting starting in may moving forward we meet a minimum a minimum of once a week regardless of what time of the year it is uh we make that commitment over the summer which is difficult because where we're nestled i don't know if anyone's ever been up this way unless you're passing it going over to penn uh, we still have quite a um, agrarian presence, so 4-H is a big factor up here, and uh, kids are, are uh, New Prairie kids, I mean, we've got 932 of them, and they do a lot, a lot of things. Um, their kids are involved in multiple events, sports, activities, um, you name it, 
and it's, it's a fight for time. And so I'm willing to give up a little bit in the summer. We can get them there a few times. We try to go twice a month in the summer times. I'd like to go once a week if we could, but that may be unrealistic because kids just, you know, go on vacation and, you know, uh, <laughs> athletics, so on and so forth. But we are always, always, almost year round from the, we, we come back and that first Monday we're back, we have a meeting. And it's an organizational call out. Uh, but it is very important to maintain a connection with the kids. So just to let them know that, hey, there's, we're still, it's, we've got two seasons. We've got build season and competition season, and then we've got the off season. That's how we look at it. And then um, Betsy and Frank both, um, are you choosing student leadership for your, so for example, we're, we're wrapping up the 2019 season. We'll, we'll just pretend it's all over. Um, are you choosing leadership for the 2020 season this spring or are you waiting until the fall? So Frank, when do you guys kind of choose it? If you have a, a student leadership structure, when do you kind of put that together? We, we do have a student leadership structure and it, uh, we are meeting tomorrow night to perform an autopsy on the season. What went right, what went wrong. And we're going to, you know, throw that on the table. Look, this is what, you know, next time we meet, we want to have a discussion about this. Who is interested? What positions do we need to modify different positions? Was there overlap? Or was there just a spot that was, you know, unfilled that we needed someone there? Um, so we're probably about two weeks away. Okay. And then Betsy, do you guys, when do you do your student leadership? So the students elect the president and vice president in early August before we've had the formal call out for the incoming new students. And then uh, the students select their sub team leaders following the call out for new students. Oh, okay. Okay. So both happen early August, early September. So then it, um, there's not, are they typical, typically seniors that are in those jobs? Not necessarily. Okay. Uh, the president and vice president are generally sophomore through senior. Okay. But sub team leaders can also, I mean, generally they're at least sophomore. It's very rare to have a freshman step into one of those roles. Yeah. So that, so there could potentially be like during the summer, you may have a bit of a, a, a leadership gap, but that, I mean, you're, you're a mentor team, you know, you've got other people, plus you've got students that are rising up through the ranks that can kind of help fill those gaps, but you could potentially be through the summer, your student leaders could be gone, right? Typically our student leaders are juniors. Oh. Um, we have a lot of elected uh, sophomores enter roles and become juniors and a lot of our team members choose to take their senior year off from leadership and often step into a more mentorship role. Oh okay. So, so right it's approach. very rare that we have a summer that is without at least one leader. I sort of like that idea the idea the seniors are working on uh, leaving behind everything they've learned uh, and kind of bringing about some sustainability. Okay. And uh, on the slide here, I, I just put some things. I put having team conduct a, a SWOT, pest analysis. Frank, you mentioned you guys kind of do an autopsy of the season. Yet, you know, this is another, you know, kind of way for a team to gather and, and look back at the season and say, you know, let's, let's kind of see what happened or, or use this moment knowing what has transpired. Let's look forward now into the 2020 season and see what are our, our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats um, to kind of move along there. Uh, recruiting, I'd put on here too, just kind of the call out sessions with middle school, high school students, creating posters. I, I threw a little tool on there. Those of you who have never seen this, canva.com, really awesome online tool, uh, free. There are some paid features, but I've never used them. You can, you can whip up a really, really real nice looking flyer in about 10 minutes, uh, eight and a half by 11, you can you know, upload your own pictures, logos and stuff. Um, and then you've got a flyer ready, you can put it in PDF and put it on, online. And uh, so there's uh, a tool there. So uh, it's actually something that Indiana first uses for our handouts. And so you can always tell your students that, you know, if they're learning how to use the software, a company and organization uses it as well. Yeah, it's it's nice, especially for the quick stuff. I know um, it, sometimes you know it's great for the students to learn uh, the industry tools like Illustrator and Photoshop. Uh, those can just 
be really time consuming if you're looking to create something real quick and and uh, and and professional looking. So, all right. So, kind of moving along, um, want to kind of chat about um the the money piece at first which we know in terms of frc it's it's not a cheap um venture and you know, we have a lot of grants and and some great sponsors out there um uh, but um so frank and and betsy frank i'll have maybe you talk first um when do you guys kind of start your uh maybe new sponsor acquisition phase or you know nurturing current sponsors when do you guys kind of start all that? Um, I don't think we ever stop. Uh, it's an ongoing process for us. Oddly, you said that is that uh, what, we were sponsored by Navistar, which there is a testing ground right there on Highway 2 going to South Bend. And one of my mentors uh, works there. And we managed, you know, they talked to him and did a writing us a pretty okay check. And uh, their name was on our robot this year. And we were invited to a robot showcase on May 9th. In their headquarters at Lyle, Illinois, which um, I've got the green light to take the team and the robot. So it's always, we're always looking for opportunities to shake hands and put the kids, in. you know, the kids don't want to, they don't, the, the, I'm sorry, not the kids, the businesses, the organizations, the community, they don't want to see the, the adults talk. They want to see the kids talk. And so the key is getting the, the students to feel comfortable in front of groups. And so we put them in situations oftentimes where they are uncomfortable. Uh, where they have to talk to adults in groups, in situations where, you know, most people lock up. I had a, you know, we, we will always present, we have a, we're the instructional presentation for a school board meeting in the spring. In two years or three years ago, I had a senior, I thought the kid was going to hyperventilate and fall out. I really did. Uh, he was just worked up and he, he almost bit it. Uh, but, you know, that's a situation to where we do as much as we can to get our, our name, our face out there. And, you know, we'll knock on doors. I mean, um, we're starting to build up a little industry uh, moving from where we're at about east. There's a huge area there that they're trying to lure businesses in from Illinois. And we're going to be there knocking on their door when they move in. So I never really. That's that's good stuff. The, um, and maybe Betsy, um, to maybe tack on to that, can you talk a little bit about maybe what you guys do? for the sponsor relationship in other words you've gotten some sponsors um you know and i'm sure you guys are doing some of the stuff frank's talking about too about identifying new ones and knocking on doors what are you guys doing to maybe keep the sponsors you have so uh something i that we do that i think is unique i haven't seen other teams do it but i think more definitely should is at the beginning well at the end of every season somewhere in the vicinity of May, June, we buy a stack of about 100 postcards from Vistaprint with season pictures on them. And anytime we have a sponsor give us anything, we drop a postcard in the mail that day, boom, out. Just to let them know we received the money and we're appreciative or the in-kind donation or whatever it is. Um, and then we formally recognize sponsors at our end of year banquet every year in either um, April or May, depending on when the season ends. Okay. And so that allows the sponsors to know that, like, we received the money they sent, because in the past we had had them call us up and be like, hey, we sent a check, did you get it? And that kind of alleviates that and lets them know that, yes, we received it and we are appreciative, and then gives us time to, A, keep track of who all is donated, because we know who we've sent postcards to, we've got addresses, we've got names. And then B, we can make sure we've got that list to continue those relationships and then be able to formally recognize them at the end of the season. And exactly. even though we, we're always seeking out new sponsors year round, just like Frank said, we make sure our sponsors are aware that our like formal season, we'll call it, is basically school year related. So they may give us money in February, but that might not make it onto the shirt or the robot until the following season. Gotcha. Which yeah. does present issues in keeping track of all of those things, but hasn't been a problem yet. Yeah. And then, um, Frank, do you guys, do, uh, do you do an end of year banquet? We, we do. Uh, because <laughs> base by, I've got baseball players, I've got softball players, <laughs> I've got uh, tennis players i've got track athletes right <laughs> uh, I, 
move and a soccer, you know, a, one soccer player. So uh, May 6th, a Monday, we will be having our end of their banquet. We invite all of our sponsors. We recognize, I, I like the, Betsy, I really like the postcard. We're probably going to steal that idea. Uh, we invite our sponsors. We, we put a nice uh, a guy I actually know from high school, runs a business in Michigan City. We get these really nice plaques with uh, dye sublimated um, <clears throat> a team picture on there and a big thank you. And we make sure that if they don't come to the banquet, we get them to them. Uh, they get a sponsor shirt with their, their business name on the back. Uh, we've been putting out um, every week or so a, a newsletter during the season about our progress with pictures, PDF, and email it. Uh, so, yeah, those sorts of things that we do also, and we've been doing for 13 years. I like the the newsletter update idea, and, and yeah, and, and Betsy's idea. We I um, I was formerly also in the nonprofit sector with a a, a hunger charity, and um, we always kept thank you cards around. And at every staff meeting, we met weekly. Um, we would bring the the cards out uh, because we felt like as an organization we needed to have an attitude of gratitude. Uh, and so it would always be, who, who do we need to thank this week? And that's something I've brought to uh, the team I help mentors. And again, with Betsy's idea, I, I just went to Vista Print and I grabbed a team picture from the, you know, the most recent one we have and put a, you know, thank you for your support and that kind of thing. And then have kids or mentors sign it. And just every meeting, who do we need to thank this week? You know, and it could be, um, you know, like after our, our event that we hosted, um, oh, we all got, carpal tunnel because you know we sent thank you cards to you know andy mark and and you know all sorts of just just anytime we can think of somebody to thank it's an ongoing relationship and so it's good to hear we've got some teams doing that and those of you who are out there um this is just a it it could be a very simple way and it could be a postcard it could be a card i like the at the banquet i like your you know getting the t-shirts in front of them ultimately you can kind of base it on to, you know, how much are they giving? You know, if you have a, a local business who's maybe given 50 or a hundred dollars, a thank you letter with maybe a postcard or a card is, is certainly appropriate. But when you have a $5,000 sponsor, maybe not just a postcard and a, and a quick letter is not appropriate. Now, maybe like you were saying, the plaque and the t-shirts and stuff. So, well, very good. Um, uh, the, I had, Originally scheduled the call for a half hour. I mean, for an hour. I'm sorry. Um, we're probably not going to go that long. But um, what I kind of also want to hit on is some of the outreach and and maybe off season competition stuff that that you guys do. Um, I think for for our younger teams, um, you know, those first, second, third year teams who honestly are trying to get organized, trying to get students involved. Uh, trying to trying to raise the money uh, just to stay sustainable. Some of this stuff might be um, down the road for them, uh, but I think if they could try one thing. So you know, what what would be maybe one or or maybe two things that a, a younger team could try, um, Betsy? That that you think that a team could try to tackle? You know, we look at. We look at Penn, who had you know six hundred kids come through their summer camp this summer. That for a first, second year team is going to be pretty tough to do. But um, any thoughts on some outreach? Uh, definitely be willing to take your robot anywhere and do anything. So a lot of our smaller outreach is based entirely upon things the students on the team already had planned for the summer. So an example is uh, last summer, one of our students was. Um, like a day camp counselor for their church camp. And he approached me in like July and was like, hey, I want to bring the robot in for one of the days. Can I do that? And I was like, absolutely. And so a handful of kids met with him and they took the robot into his church day camp. And okay. it was very low key, very simple little event. And the kids had a blast. The students on the team had a blast. And, you know, it was a, it was a fun time. And we've done things like that with a number of different places in the community. So like there in Lafayette is a, um, a STEM museum. And so sometimes we'll do robotics nights at the STEM museum. Just, you know, we meet on Tuesday and the robot's there for just a few hours in the evening. Um, also, it's pretty easy to reserve a room at your local library. 
And so we'll do kind of, we call them day camps, where the students show up with little booths of things to do. Some of it's as simple as color this robot picture, or, you know, here's a display of some of the motors and things we use on the robot, and then a booth where they can drive the robot, and we're just there from, you know, open to close. Okay. So, in other words, find some stuff that's already happening or some places that already exist and just uh, tag on with them. Yeah, the library idea, sometimes they've got STEM camps going on and you could just partner with them and say, hey, we'll just show up and be a part of it. And then they're promoting it. And I think oftentimes it's the promotion piece. Frank, are there a couple things you guys do that you think are pretty doable for a, a new team out there? Or? Are you talking about outreach or are we talking about uh, fundraising? Outreach. Okay. Uh, I would suggest, uh, like Betsy said, we've actually been involved with a uh, an autism camp. It's uh, held at uh, a county park in Westville, Indiana, which is south of Michigan City. And uh, we have taken our robot there, and those uh, those special needs kids, they uh, we let them drive it and thrash it, and and they oh, you've never seen people you know kids drive a robot like they drive a robot. It, it's amazing. Uh, and they, they get engaged and, and we're asked every year, we, we make sure we set that up. The other thing I would strongly recommend you do is because no matter, even 13 years later, I still have people say, I didn't know we had a robotics team and I don't know what else we can do. Uh, we've got a small town newspaper. Um, it's actually run by a former student and a football player of mine from years back. So I'm always in contact with him to get stuff in there get involved with any local parade that you can that is you would not believe the feedback you get from a parade and um you know drive your robot around make sure you have extra batteries throw candy at the kids it's amazing make sure you have your flyers you will get more support there than than it just shocks you how much you know people contact you they want yeah you know, what can i do to help what can i do to mentor what you know what can you you know the idea is, is get those folks going and but they need to know you exist okay i think uh renee renee did you have something she raised her hand maybe not um all right so um i guess the yeah so the um the outreach stuff, uh, tagging on things that are already happening, fairs, festivals, parades, uh, let them do the promotional work. You show up and, and demo your robot uh, is good stuff. Um, we talked about recruiting and then um, we get back to school. And, and I think that, Frank, you made a good point that it, it really needs to be year round. Um, I know some teams talk about trying to end their school year. Um, so come end of May, with um, enough money in their account to pay next year's registration fee. Um, that if you can end your year with next year's registration fee in the bank, um, it really makes fall look a lot different. I know, I know it's tough for folks. Um, it's not, it's not going to be a hundred percent of the teams out there that can do that, but certainly it's a, it's a good goal. Uh, and then on a budgeting side, um, budgeting each year based on the idea that you're going to go to the world championship every year. Um, uh, can be a game changer because if you actually hit your budgeted marks and you don't go to the world championship, you've got some extra money maybe to get a trailer or, or do some uh, fun things. Maybe take a, uh, maybe half, maybe now you can probably pay for some kids to go to the national advocacy conference in DC or whatever. So uh, I guess we'll probably kind of wrap on the, on the fundraising side of things. Um, I know, you know, build season's a, a terrible time to fundraise unless it's dying to donates. Um, if your team is big enough, um, the, uh, um, sorry, I just got a text from Renee. Uh, she's had a, a weird glitch. Um, she, she had said, uh, maybe uh, like Frank, you guys do a school board presentation, uh, maybe once a year, try to get in, in front of your school board or, and, or in front of your town council or, or mayor. Um, is is definitely uh, another one to get in front of. So on the fundraising stuff, um, Frank, we'll let you go first on this one. What are outside of sponsorship targeting? What are some fundraisers you guys have done that maybe uh, you've had some success with? Hey, there's Renee. I see you. I'm back. Hey, the the one that is, is a no brainer. This is the one I want to bring up, and um, 
I, I, I can't stress this enough, and you almost have to jump on it now, is there are automobile manufacturers, Ford's the one that jumps out. They have a program called Test Drive for Your School, F, uh, I'm sorry, the number four, you are school. And it is a, basically a local dealership comes out, they supply six or eight brand new Ford cars, People sign, fill out this little questionnaire, show that they have a license, take a little test drive, come back, fill out another questionnaire. You get 50, or I'm sorry, $20, $20 for each licensed driver, single household. You can't have everybody from one house. And um, up to some ungodly number, like uh, 300 drivers, $6,000. It is an easy, easy, easy way to raise four to $5,000. Wow. I, I cannot stress enough, you, you gotta promote it. And the thing I've learned, especially where we're located, you better tag it with another event that's going on because if it's a standalone event, you might be some lonely, cold people standing out there with the wind blowing. We're lucky enough because New Prairie hosts that um, monstrosity of a cross-country event. I don't know if everyone's aware of it. Thousands and thousands of three states, thousands of kids. Uh, the foot traffic's insane. We, boom, 300, like, we blink. We were right out front of the school. We're not anywhere near the cross country course. You know, we got robots on display. It, it's easy money. Wow. So test drive for your school, uh, the number four you are. Yeah, if you do a okay. uh, Ford Motor Company, I, I think that uh, one of the GM ones does it also. Okay. Uh, look into that. that. That to me is, that's, that's easy. All you have to do, your parents have to stand up. They just ride along with the, whoever the driver is. I mean, it's, it's a simple way. And if you tie it in, I don't know what people have their, you know, commitment, fundraising commitment or sponsorship commitment for team members, but they can knock that out in a day. Okay. To me, to me, it's, you know, we, we circle that on the calendar. Okay. Kind of your event, you guys own it and you do it there and it, and it becomes an annual thing too. And that, that's a, a good way to um, make something big too, as long as you continue to own it and do it big. Betsy, do you guys have kind of an ongoing or a, an example of a good fundraiser that you guys have, have done? Uh, we make it a habit of applying for a handful of the same grants with the same organizations every single year. So um, I suggest that teams search out um, if they have any community foundations. Um, we always seek out community foundation every single year, so much so that now the Community Foundation of Tippecanoe County is familiar enough with us that um, last year, for example, when they found out the team was going to Worlds, they just gave us extra money. They had they gave us um, the interest off of one of their their accounts. Um, wow. So I would suggest uh, forming those relationships. You can also find um, Optimist Clubs are another good place to talk to people and form relationships there. Uh, we also make it a habit of we have a dine to donate about once a month. So everybody on the team and a bunch of community people are familiar enough to know that every single month that the team is somewhere eating. And those have uh, started to be consistent enough and effective enough that we ran Moe's out of food last month. <laughs> wow. So. Now, do you guys, do you guys just go and eat, or do, do you bring robot out to those, or do you just, is it just dining? It depends on the location. Um, some locations are large enough that they allow us to bring the robot. Okay. So we did one with, um, like, Papa Murphy's Take and Bake, and they had enough space for the robot. But other locations, like, unfortunately, the Moe's on Wabash Landing is not big enough for a robot. Okay. Okay, so kind of, and and your your success there, you feel like, is because you've you've made it a it, it, people begin to expect it because it's it's regular, it's once a month, it's yeah, and so like the teachers at the high school all know to expect it, the students at the high school know to expect it, um, and various people, I mean, have seen us, so like team related people, alumni know to expect them. Okay, all right, well. Um, I we do have a few people who've called in or or are on that um, uh, I know I see some mutes and that's fine. But uh, if there's any questions for Renee or myself or or Betsy or Frank while we're on, this would be a good time to get some questions answered. Um, it could also be. 
um, you know, it could be really kind of anything in terms of the off season. So. Hey, Chris, did you catch my text message after my glitch? Yeah, I talked to them uh, okay. and mentioned to try to get, uh, yeah, because Frank had talked about Perfect. they do school board, uh, they do school board meetings and then, uh, but yeah, getting in front of city county, uh, city council, chamber of commerce. Yeah, chamber of commerce is a good one. And then uh, one of the things that I've, I've learned over the last year is that um, more and more of the uh, economic development and or chamber of commerce uh, uh, around the state have manufacturing alliances. So these are actually groups within the chamber that are manufacturers uh, because they have specific needs and specific goals and, and getting in front of that group uh, could be very powerful. I was fortunate enough to get in front of uh, the manufacturers alliance down in Evansville and boy, you're in front of, of the choir. I mean, they, they're all there um, and you're talking to them about you have the solution to the problem they're all talking about. The problem is they can't find enough good people in their manufacturing, for their manufacturing facilities. And you walk in and say, well, for sponsorship and providing us mentors, you can have access to your future employees. Uh, and so it's a, it's a potentially really uh, fantastic partnership. Um, any other comments or questions? Um, Frank, any last kind of anything you were thinking about? Uh, do you guys do you guys often do any of the off season competitions? We we make it have it go down the boiler bot battle. Uh, it's proximity wise, it's the closest one for us because we exist straddling two different time zones. Yeah, night, travels nightmarish for us. It really, really is. So, you know, um, you know, I don't want to get up at two a.m. to go down to the cage match as much as as much fun as it looks. <laughs> So we, we try to stay uh, central time zone. It's a matter of getting enough kids there. Boiler Bot Battle is a favorite uh, for obvious, you know, mm -hmm. I have my daughters at Purdue, you know, part of the Purdue First programs. So, you know, I get a chance to hang out with her a little bit too. And then, you know, I have, you know, we put a lot of kids down at Purdue. So it's, okay. it's a great place to go. One thing I did want to mention, and I think that, uh, I don't know if it just slipped, I, I, go to a handful of Purdue football games and every time I go there's always 1747 is uh renting stadium seats and they do that for I was gonna say that. <laughs> and I, so you know, I I'm sorry go ahead I, I was actually going to mention that next uh because you talked about partnering with the cross-country meet so to speak to utilize that audience for your car thing 1747 and 461 up here partner together and they sell um, seat backs at Purdue home football games. So if you bought a season ticket, the teams will install a permanent squishy comfy seat in your seat ticket position. Um, or uh, you can buy one for each individual game and Harrison students will run out and install them for them. So if you can, if you have the capital to invest in something like that, we were fortunate enough to not have to invest that capital. We took over um, we took over the fundraising after another organization didn't want to do it anymore. But if you could find a sports organization, even just your high school, and rent seats like that, it would be a good, probably a good fundraiser for you. We, we, we do something very similar. Our Future Business Leaders of America group reached out to me. And um, it's not nearly as, as much fun as uh, renting seat backs. We've, for about four or five years, we have helped work two concession stands at home Notre Dame football games. And let me tell you, you, you earn your money at, at working concessions at football games. And I don't know if you can see my, my Michigan football. My dad went to Michigan. So for me, putting on a Notre Dame hat and, uh, and my, you know, my daughter being at Purdue and, and a Notre Dame shirt, you know, I really got to love my robotics team to do that. So, but it is an opportunity. Uh, it breaks down to, uh, our kids make per shift. It was something like $125 last year. And where else are they going to get that? You get two parents to work or work a couple games. It's been a godsend for us. And I saw on the invite that some of the fine folks from Mishawaka and the Giddy Goats were invited. And I hope that they can, you know, you don't necessarily have to be your own group. You can tag along with another group. They can't find enough people to work those Notre Dame games. So that's a great way if Mishawaka wants to get involved. Um, I mean, it, it's it's work, but it's it's a way to raise those funds. Okay. Great. 
Well, those are two great um, examples of uh, some fundraising events today. Um, not all teams charge student fees, but it sounds like um, you, you might, you guys charge student fees, but there's these fundraisers are ways for students to pay those off instead of having to have the money themselves. Uh, for us? So we charge, go ahead. sorry, go ahead. No, no, you go, go. So we don't, we don't charge, we, air quotes, we charge student fees, but it only is for the students who want to travel and it only covers their hotel space. Oh, okay. So for example, when the team went down to Georgia, students who desired to go to Georgia with the team had to pay $100 per student, but they didn't necessarily have to pay it because we have multiple uh, opportunities, such as the seat backs. If you work games, you get money off your student fees. Um, if you bring in sponsors, you get money off your student fees. If you work some of our various summer camps, you get money off your student fees. So most students don't actually have to pay those fees to travel. Okay. Um, we're, we're, we're kind of a similar idea with that. Um, all, every, every, I don't want to say dollar that the students, you know, we have, I came down, I've crunched down as low as I could. It is their direct cost to travel is ultimately what boils down. Put the shirts on their back, put some food in their mouths, um, and, and, you know, place to put their head at night. And also, you know, food throughout the year, because I don't know how the kids are at 1747, but at 2197, those kids never stop eating. I'm telling you, it's crazy. However, um, one of the things I learned, and I think it's a little bit different where, you know, I, I'm from Michigan City originally back in the days when there were housing projects. And those, if you give people, and I've seen enough with animals out here, if, if there is no investment from the student or if they have no buy-in, then it's, it's easy to walk away from. So this is a way for us to, you know, get them to buy into, you know, they've got an investment in this. It's hard to walk away. And then you don't have, you know, in my, our first couple of years, kids would come and go, and then they thought that they could just show up. And, you know, I want kids who are invested. And this is, okay, they know they have this commitment. It does support, it does pay directly for them. I mean, we're not making a dime on this. It's not buying motor controllers or any other, you know, aluminum or anything. It just covers their direct cost. But it's, it's a way for our kids to buy in. It's just, it's like Betsy said, it's just the kids who want to travel. You know, we have a handful who don't travel. And they're still part of the team. They're still in the team picture. They get a couple shirts. But that's the extent of it. It's just, that's the difference. Okay. Well, good. Yeah, I know uh, being around the state and dealing with the teams, uh, getting to know more of the teams uh, this past year, uh, it sounds like a lot of our teams kind of have that same opportunity where they've got fees, they want the students to have skin in the game, but then they also give them opportunities to go out and, you know, go talk to their parents' insurance agent or financial representative and get, you know, smaller uh, sponsorship levels, two hundred dollars, hundred dollars to help bring those student fees down. Uh, but but then they're still doing the work for it, and they're bringing their fees down. Uh, I really appreciate everybody um, being on tonight, and and Betsy and and Frank. I appreciate uh, you guys lending us um, your expertise. Um, and I just with a few minutes left, I guess just in case there's um, a few people on, I didn't know if there were any questions at all. Um, for the folks that we have, I, it doesn't look like it. Um, I am going to stop.